Hi everyone and welcome to your April 2023 energy reading. So what I'm calling this reading is Holy Pluto. So we know because it's been talk of the town now for quite some time, a big deal. We have Pluto um, that is moving into Aquarius in a couple of days from the time of my recording this. And it's going to stay in Aquarius until June 11th, and then it's going to retrograde back into Capricorn until 2024. But we are getting a taste of it. We've already been feeling it, but we're gonna get a strong taste of it before it kind of moves back out. It will still be lingering, and then it comes in for good for, I'm gonna say approximately 20 years, where it will stay in Aquarius, one of the longer uh, signs that it's going to stay in. And the thing about this too, is that it has not been in Aquarius now since sometime in the 1700s. Okay, so because it takes roughly 250 years to travel around. But first, let's touch on what is the Pluto energy. It's generational more so than personal because it's an outer planet rather than an inner planet. It has more to do with what's going on in society, what's going on around the world in different communities. And whatever happens with it, it tends to be events that will, um, that will affect entire groups or communities of people rather than just yourself. Whereas like inner planets like, you know, Mercury, Venus, Mars, the moon, it moves very quickly though, but even the sun, right? They are, well, technically the moon and sun aren't planets, they're luminaries, but besides the point, along with Mercury, Venus, and Mars, they tend to affect more of our day-to-day -day lives or literal events that can be happening in your life because they move around uh, from sign to sign so much quicker, right? So what we have to remember with Pluto is we will tend to see things happen more on a collective or a, a big scale rather than so much personal. So the reading that I wanna do is based on how can this Pluto possibly be affecting you personally, okay? Just to give you an idea of how it can maybe affect you personally. So we will get into that. Um, I just want to let you know, Pluto rules the eighth house, which is transformation, death and rebirth, joint finances, other people's money, debts, inheritance, what is hidden below the surface, and what's considered taboo on more of a personal level. On more of a larger scale, we're going to look at things like systems of power, um, communal or collective, you know, what's good for, for all rather than just I myself. Um, also information, so like science, technology, data. Those would be the big events that are gonna happen to groups of people or countries or around the world or what, however you might wanna say it. Those would be themes for us as a collective with Pluto. So I hope that explained it a little bit. Uh, what we're going to do is we have pile one uh, starting over here with the hematite, pile two with the black tourmaline, and pile three with the tectite. So I just wanted dark stones for Pluto for whatever reason. It could be the Scorpio coming out of me. I don't know. But anyway, those are your pile selection or those are your piles. Um, pick the, the pile number, the, the card or the crystal that is calling to you and I will see you in your reading. Hi to everyone who chose pile one in this hematite uh, crystal. I'm just going to set that over there. Let's get right into your reading. We're going to have um, overall energy. Like I said, this is holy Pluto. We know that it's a heavy energy, more generational um, for the most part, like feeling it come into Aquarius. But yet Pluto energy still affects everyone because we all have it in our birth chart. It rules the eighth house. It rules Scorpio. So what we want to know is how 
may this Pluto energy affect you personally rather than how it's going to be affecting the whole or the collective over the next few months until June 11th. I put everything in description of kind of what it all is um, in the if you want more info, but I want to know how it's going to maybe affect you more personally, pile one. So let's get right into it. So we have that more personal energy, I want to say, coming in here with, with Pluto about uh, transformation, joint finances, other people's money, debts, inheritance, what is hidden below the surface and what's considered taboo. So let's get your overall energy of where it may be affecting you. We have cancer. Okay. And we have Pisces. Oh, this is very watery then. Okay, because we have Pluto, like I said, uh, ruler of a water house and sign. We have the other two, Cancer and Pisces. So this is an emotional transformation, I believe, for you in some way. But with Pluto, who likes to keep things just hidden under the table, that Scorpio energy, right? What's just below the surface what's hidden below the surface, and Pisces, what sometimes we hide behind, right? Mm. Let's see what else there is. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> Transformation. So I'm also going to do something different too. I'm going to read these two cards together, I think. That's my intention behind it anyway. Uh, that's what I asked for. Read these two together and these two together, and then we see as a whole what the message is. Okay, so first off, just seeing these two cards here as your overall energy pile one, I want to say that this transformation, this taking a leap forward, right, death and rebirth is going to be when it comes around um, issues to do with family. For some of you, it could very well be directly linked to mother because we're showing mother and child here because that cancer energy is nurturing and caring, loving, right? It's um, being very family focused. But with Pisces here and the fact that it's Pluto energy, I want to say, I feel like maybe that isn't happening or maybe... I think it's going to be different for everyone. I'm going to throw out some examples like they're giving me if as a child you maybe maybe weren't nurtured or given to emotionally, fed emotionally as a child. Um, that was kind of held back from you or hidden from you or you even hid from it. You didn't feel comfortable with it for whatever reason. I feel like that's what we need to get over here. This lack of cancer, loving, nurturing energy. I feel like it just didn't happen. You know how they say sometimes with 12th house, it can kind of be what's behind the scenes or Pisces, what's hidden or behind. I feel that that was hidden or held back in some way. So the transformation that would need to happen here would be around transforming that. And what did we actually have come out here? Transformation. We also had Scorpio come out, <laughs> which again, just kind of cracks me up, right? The sign of, again, death and rebirth, transformation, right? Many other things that go along with it too. For example, maybe, but it's the, it's the cancer energy here that's really getting me. I really feel it's about the mothering and the nurturing and lack of or lack of being able to accept it. Or you yourself maybe are the person who's not able to, to give it the, the way it should be to nurture and care for your family, your, your children, whatever it may be. But this Pluto energy is certainly telling you right now it's it's time so um, the energy of transformation here, it says supports our ability to gracefully flow through times of transition, allowing the old to make room for the new. Exactly. We need to let go of those feelings and emotions that are being held back 
or to let go of the pain of them being held back by someone towards you to let go of the pain, the wounding that that may have caused. And the, I just love the fact that this says, how did it say? Um, supports our ability to gracefully flow. This is all water, right? This is all water. So I want to say for you, pile one, I'm really hoping with all this water energy behind it as well. And like I said, Pluto's a um, the ruler of a water planet and a water sign. So sorry, a water house and a water sign. So what I, I, I just feel like this is really going to ask you to be willing to take on the transition, to, to take on the transformation. Um, we have investigate here with Scorpio, you know, really dig deep and figure out um, if, if you're the person holding back, why? Why do you do that? You know, these aren't easy questions. They are tough ones. But Scorpios love to get to the bottom of things. So take on that Scorpio energy. Or if you're the person that didn't receive that kind of, of emotional love and support, you may have to dig into the wounding that it's caused and figure out a way for you to be able to flow effortlessly while you're getting rid of all that old, I'm going to call it baggage, right? Getting rid of all that old baggage and bringing in the new baggage. <laughs> Sorry, it's not new baggage. Oh my God, I'm having a hard time talking. It would be bringing in the new for you, okay? And then with these two cards here, I want to say, what is what's holding you back from being able to um, heal that wounding? It's fear. A lot of you are fearful. You know, who would I be if I don't have these wounds? Or who would I be if I actually do treat people with that love and nurturing and caring? That's just so not me. You know, there's fear there because... how how they want to explain it when we don't know anything other than what we are and how we are especially if we're self-aware you can even be self-aware when it's it's in a negative or in a shadow um it's that fear that holds you back because you start to question well, who will I be? What will I be like? What would my life be like if I started acting or feeling or caring or behaving in a different way? Because we can control what we know. We feel that we can't control what we don't know. All right. And with this Pisces energy, um, it's, it's the reason I feel like this is going to be work for you because this is what's hidden and unseen. And I feel like you might want to stay back there a little bit, right? You don't want to bring these issues to the forefront for transformation. You don't want to dig into them. You want to keep that control in your life. And, and you, you don't even realize that you're living in the fear of it, but you are. And, you know, now that I've mentioned it, now it's really going to be, oh, my God, what it, what will it be like if I work on this? But here's the thing. The universe, God, source is bringing this reading to you if you chose this pile, because this is something that you need to hear. And I just see sextile here, which is working in harmony, okay? Okay. And right under sextile is opportunity. And the thing that I love, that's what's happening with the way these cards come out. I mean, I didn't know exactly. I just knew I was asking to read these two, these two, and these two together. This is your opportunity, okay? Uh, this is time for you to have compassion with yourself. It says the frequency of compassion supports our ability to stand by others without judgment and be the divine mediator between heaven and earth, spirit and matter, so that unconditional love can flow. We're talking about flow again from source, 
God universe, through our heart, and out into the world. Because when we're carrying baggage and wounding, it's hard to be spreading that love, right? It's hard to be caring about anyone else in the collective because we're only concerned with what's happening for us. And Pluto moving into Aquarius is one of the, the key things is thinking about the other, being worried about the other, figuring how, out how to work with the other. That's very Aquarian energy. And so I think you're getting this message because they want you to work on yourself first so that you're able to go out into the world and let love and compassion flow. But that can't happen until it flows within you. Okay, that is your main message. I want to pull some tarot now just to see if there's any additional um, information, uh, advice, uh, guidance that they want to give. And also, um, if it's going to clarify or confirm any of the cards here on the table. So let me just do a shuffle here. Oh, well, out came one already, the Empress. We're talking about compassion and caring, you know, being able and look here with the child and the child's lit up. It's like going out new, brand new. That child has come into the world without, right, with no prejudice. They are pure, clean. It's a clean slate. And I feel like that's how they want you to, to fix this wounding within yourself and to be able to go out into the world or even with just your loved ones. Okay, great. Seven of Cups. And to share that kind of like through the eyes or the being of a newborn child who just is pure love and joy, really. It's really what I want to say about that. Not to mention, we know the Empress is just everything nurturing and caring and, and wanting to plant seeds and watch them grow. Here we have the Seven of Cups. For me, and it's Scorpio and Venus, but what it's, what this is saying to me is this is a choice. Everything is a choice right? Everything is a choice. You're not going to, nobody's forcing you to do this. But they really want you to make the right choice here. Okay. That's what this card is coming through to me as there. And for each of you, it will be different. So maybe it's going to be a different way, a different choice for each one of you could also be um, what, what they want you to know. But I just really feel like this is kind of just confirming this is a choice and, and they want you to make it. Okay. One last card. Queen of Cups. We have two of the most compassionate nurturing energies in the deck here saying, you know, please take on this energy. It is important in our world, and that's why these messages are coming out like this, and a lot of them are. They really want you to work on yourself so that you have cups here. Think of full cups to be able to give to others. You can't give to others with an empty cup. And I know this is a seven of cup and choices and the cups are always full. But again, I think it just, they brought my attention to that, which is look at these full cups. They want you to have a full cup. They want you to be in good standing, good position, um, balanced emotionally. Okay. Here and here emotionally to be able to go out into the world as a healed, loving, kind, compassionate human being. I love this is a beautiful message, but as I always say, and will continue to say with probably every reading that I do, this is going to take work. This doesn't happen overnight. Do not be hard on yourself, but you know what? We have quite a bit of time with Pluto over the next 18 to 20 years. <laughs> Please don't wait that long, but um, in, a, in Aquarius, it's really going to... 
I don't want to call it an agenda, but that's the word that comes through so that you understand my meaning. They're really, really God source universe pushing this, right? Like we really need to step into that Aquarius energy. And Pluto is the planet that's here to give us the ability and the energy to make those transformations in our life. And then to step out on the other side, renewed, refreshed, rebirth, so to speak, right? And this baby, the fact I even chose this uh, tarot deck, which I don't use a lot, the fact that I chose it and look at the bait, like just blows my mind. Just blows my mind every time I do a reading and it all ties together like this. So let's get an oracle card and then we're going to do one last card, which is an overall energy. So... Let's see here. What do we have for pile one? What door? Forgive and forget. Oh, you guys, remember I said whether you're the person who was unable to give this energy to your family or whether you were the person in the family that didn't receive it. Forgive and forget. A ritual cleansing of pain and lies. Arise and awaken. See a new sunrise. But it is time to forgive and forget, and you're doing it for yourself so that you can move forward. All right, and let's just get one. This is a cosmic energy deck, or cosmic journey deck, it's called Oracle Cards. Let's see what they're going to give us here for overall energy. Maybe just something to help you. And this doesn't have to be, I mean, it feels heavy whenever we have to work on ourselves, I always say. It's always... It feels heavy in the moment or even when you're hearing it, but know that you can also enjoy doing this for yourself. Enjoy looking back when you see that you've made, you know, steps forward or you've, you know, you've hit a goal in your transformation or a milestone in your transformation to be able to look back with joy and gratitude that you've made it that far already, right? I, I just felt that that was needed okay let's get an overall here right into this reality i like it okay so it's righted into reality but right into this reality this is your reality pile one this is all of our realities we're here it's 3d energy of the planet earth this is where we are but we get to create because we have free will what and we have the magic, if you want to call it, within all of us, the Holy Spirit, to be able to create what it is that we want our life to be. So if you're unhappy and have wounding that's coming from here, time to write it into this reality for yourself. Okay? No, no sense of wait until another life to do it. <laughs> do it in this one. So those are... That's the overall message. Really happy and pleased. I love the way this came through, the cards that come out for it. Really, really beautiful. So if you like this reading, uh, please, by all means, uh, give me a thumbs up. It helps the algorithm as a new channel to push my videos out. If you like energy type readings, that's what I do. I do them in many different ways with different theme decks and that sort of thing and different themed energies. Uh, but, you know, doesn't matter. All of those spirits, guides, beings, entities of love and light and high vibration all work together. So the messages are always great in each one of them. And um, if you believe there's someone who maybe you know that's going through this type of wounding, okay, uh, please um, share this video with them because maybe they can find something helpful or useful within the message too. Okay, so thank you very much, Pile One. I'll see you next time. Hi to those of you who chose Pile Two or this uh, Black Tourmaline Crystal. This is your April energy reading. We're talking about the energy of Pluto because the title is Holy Pluto. We know this is a very strong energy coming as it's coming into Aquarius, a lot of changes. It's definitely generational. I talk about that Bakshin at the very beginning of this video. If you want to check out more about the Pluto energy. But like I said, it's generational. So 
what you'll feel with the Aquarius is going to be more about the collective, what's happening in the world. Again, info out at the beginning. We want to focus on, okay, everyone has Pluto in their chart. It rules the eighth house. It rules Scorpio. And we all have that in our natal chart. But we also have this strong Pluto energy right now as it's transiting. And it's going to be around for quite some time, 18 to 20 years. But right in the beginning, right now, as we're feeling that coming in, how's it going to affect you? So I did three piles, just how's the Pluto energy that's kind of happening out there? How's it going to affect you personally? In other words, similar to a personal planet, okay? So we have overall energy. We're going to have an ending energy. Uh, we're going to do live tarot within and a couple more oracles, but let's get started. So where is this energy of transformation? Okay, death and rebirth going to take place. So Venus, that is Libra Taurus. Okay, and we have Libra. Okay, so what we know about Libra is... Uh, it's all about what you love with Venus, okay? But with Libra here, I want to say it's going to be about your relationships. So those are with people like your spouse, your significant other, your family, your friends, colleagues, business partners, even your clients at your work or whatever. Um and wanting, you know, peace, fairness, harmony, justice within those relationships. So that's where I'm going to say right now, we'll see what the rest of these cards are. But right now, this is definitely around relationships. So keep that in mind, what transformation needs to happen there, what death and rebirth, release and let go type of thing. Okay, so, oh, well, there, here's one, friendship. <laughs> oh, I love it. Gemini, happiness, intuition, throat chakra, and 12th house. So what I did, my intention that I sat, set when um, creating the piles, I asked as I was, you know, flipping through, letting the cards come out, whichever way it happens, it's different every time, but I asked for these two, these two, and these two to be read together as a pair. So, and then just, you know, overall, it, it will make sense. So right away, I said, we're talking about um, relationships here, one-to-one -one relationships with whomever. It came out very strong. So I'm going to say for the majority of you, this probably is going to have to do with friendships, but please remember, it could also be in the other one-to-one uh, -one relationships or partnerships in your life as well. So you just take the info and apply it to that. But here with friendship, it's so funny. I see cross-pollinate here and all I think of is I feel like there needs to be some new fresh flower or some new fresh friendship brought in so that you're able to cross-pollinate because nothing can germinate it right I think that's how you say it without cross-pollination I just know when you're planting vegetables or even flowers and stuff like that sometimes you have to have a male and a female or with some vegetables a certain flower I, I don't know there was something about tomatoes one time and I was like really we have to cross-pollinate our tomatoes but anyway yes it happens um so that they have a I want to say a non-hostile environment to grow in that's the way it's coming into me non-hostile hmm interesting let's read here but what the friendship card says it says the energy of friendship supports our intrinsic desire for connection with others based on mutual affection and appreciation yes right? You have to have two of a different type of flower or the bees go and collect from different flowers and that's cross-pollinating. I'm not sure exactly how it all works, people, but <laughs> maybe you do. But I think you're kind of getting the gist of what I'm trying to say. There needs to be cohesion, friendliness, and working together here. And and we just look at the bees and we know that they do that too. So somewhere in your life, 
I would say there's relationships that possibly are not working for you. You know this and you know it's time to freshen up the friendship or people relationship pool that you're in or if it's literally a partnership or um, with someone like a spouse or significant other, a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, companion, that maybe there needs to be some fresh blood there. So in other words, you may have to leave behind and move on. So you may have to death the relationship to rebirth into another. And with happiness and intuition, what's coming through is, oh, I'm going to get to the dolphins here too. You... You're just going to know. It's a question of happiness. The people or person that you're with right now, are you happy? If you're answering, yes, I'm absolutely happy, then this isn't your pile, <laughs> right? If you're going, not really, you know, I'm not happy all the time. It's great in other ways, but am I happy on a day-to-day? -day? No, I'm really not. I feel X, Y, or Z. Then... This is your message because this is your barometer and it's quite simple. Happy's in the middle. You either are or you aren't. Okay. That's, I just feel there's, they're just putting that through and kind of with my tone even that I'm using it. I feel like it's, I feel like I'm being very serious here about it. Right. It's, I am aware that being happy means that I am on the right path or in the right relationship. And when I look at the dolphins on this card, okay, I want to talk about this card because I just love it. One, it's the flow, right? It's it's that it's that circle. It's just it's moving and flowing and everything's moving with ease and I feel that that's what your relationship there's something else. Either it's moving with ease and flowing on a daily basis. It is or it isn't, right? That's another way for you to measure against it. Another way, because with this card too, I love this card and it's so simple, but it's water and earth. It's the emotion and it's the grounding. And one thing I learned while doing my astrology courses is that water and earth can be one of two ways. Water and earth that is what you need to make something grow. You plant the seed in the earth, you water it, you tend to it, you nurture it, you care for it, you watch it grow. Or it rains in a field and it all turns to muck and all your vehicles, cars, tractors, whatever gets stuck and nothing can move. So again, we're here in the middle. Are you moving and flowing and growing and nurturing? We're coming back. Or are you getting stuck in the mud and can't move forward anywhere, frontwards, backwards, or sideways? Oh, they are really pushing this home, but it's an important message. So for those of you who chose pile two, this is really, they're really laying it down and laying it out for you, right? And they want you to use, again, the water, your intuition, the intuition, your intuition to, to trust your gut feeling, not to let your mind go, oh, but it's good sometimes or oh, but it provides me with this. This is really about, but how does it make you feel? How does it make you feel? Right? Are you feeling that there's mutual affection and appreciation and a deep connection there? Are you feeling that everyone's getting along, working together like the bees and out cross-pollinating and everyone's, my God, happy? <laughs> you know? And then this last part here, I feel like what they're trying to say, 12th house, surrender, perfect word. But, right, that's kind of your intuition, of course. But it's also self-reflection reflection on the relationship but it's also where sometimes you would stay in something and sabotage yourself or 
you may be withdrawing because it isn't working the way it is, but rather than getting out of it, you just withdraw from it altogether. And it's like two strangers being together or you're hiding behind the curtain, afraid to come out, so to speak, to speak up. And this is throat chakra, which is, <clears throat> pardon me, now I'm coughing, probably because I feel like I've just been preaching <laughs> this without taking a breath or swallowing. Um, I don't know why I just felt like I feel when I'm talking, it's either very calm and whatever, or I'm very excited if it's something exciting or if it's if it's important. And I the way the message is coming through to me, I feel like I need to be like, oh, just, you know, hammering at home. Um, but you need to speak up, right? This is the message. It's time to speak up. It's time. Um, it says here, the frequency of the throat chakra, the blue flower of life, supports our self-expression and our sense of peace and balance. There's something else that you can measure it again. How much peace is in the home or in the relationship? There either is or there isn't, right? How much balance? This is all about balance. I love the, the fact that I even brought that up and didn't even think of the word balance. But Libra, hello, the scales right in front of me and didn't even mention them. But that's what I've been talking about this, this whole time, right? You're either going this way or it's going that way or up or down, right? That's what I feel the message is here for you, pile two. And as I always say in each pile, usually... Um, it's hard to see yourself over on the other side of whatever this is. But this is why you were drawn to this pile, to this crystal, to this reading, because you needed to hear this message to know that they're here telling you this is coming out for a reason to say, but everything will be better on the other side. It doesn't mean that there isn't going to be a lot of emotion and you might feel in the muck a little bit during it. It's never easy to leave anything or to move on from anything, regardless of it being bad, okay? Because there's still some good in there too. So let's look. That's the main message. Let's look and see what the tarot has to say. Confirmation, clarification of what's already on the table, or maybe it will be um, additional guidance, advice, insight, Let's see what happens here. But this is the time, right? This is the time that Pluto energy of transformation is hovering above us and all around us. And while it going into Aquarius tends to be more about collective because it's generational, right? It's, it's out there. So it's affecting the group as a whole, not individual like inner planets, Mercury, Mars, Venus, say, or even the luminary sun and moon. Um... But that energy is still there, that energy of, of wanting to transform, wanting to take a leap, right, forward and not backwards or not staying stagnant in something. So let's get the first tarot card. We have the Four of Wands. Okay, remember I said this is, they just want you to know that everything's going to be okay on the other side. This is you ending, putting a death to some relationship in your life and walking through the doors and look at the light on the other side. We know the four of wands says success, right? Okay. And I even want to say finding balance, right? Because it's two doors balanced. It's trees on either side balanced. It's four wands balanced. But it's moving forward. Ace of coins. It's a brand new start. That's what aces are. It's a brand new grounded start. And we were talking here about the water and the, and the earth, right? This is... Moving forward with a new perception or a new, I'm going to say like a new lease on life. I'm thinking of land, a lease on land, a lease on life. It's, you know, focusing on yourself as in, you know, what do you want your life to be, your home, your family. 
this is the new start that you need for yourself. Okay? This is being methodical throughout this process, being grounded, being steady, not allowing the emotions, right? Not allowing yourself to get in the muck. I mean, it's going to happen. We're human beings. We're not perfect. And when you're trying to dissolve a relationship of any type here, there's going to be some mud, okay? But the goal is to stay grounded and balanced in it. And we do have the Libra energy, which will help you with that, and the Venus energy, which will help you with that, because she's loving and nurturing and only wants what's best for you, Venus, okay? And Libra wants things to be balanced and to work out. So, uh, you know, I like that. Let's get a third. The moon. Your hopes and your dreams, I want to say. What do you dream your new life into being? Um, what do you imagine for your new life? We know it's going to be successful on the other side of this door. I think while you're going through it, you also need to be looking forward with positivity into healing even as well. I want to say healing with the moon. But I also want you to dream. I'm thinking kind of that 12th house, right? I know it's fourth, but still with the moon, I want you to be able to even nurture yourself during this. A lot of healing. But to be able to, to follow the new path that's going to be laid out for you on the other side of this door. That's the way I'm going to read the moon card there. It's your emotions, again, to be emotionally balanced between, again, we have water and earth here. Here we have water and earth, okay? Um, and then we've got the fire. So that is that portion. Let's get, uh, before we do the final card, which is overall, let's just get a, a Divine Doors Oracle card here. Is there? Oh, we'll let that one come right out. Heart Healing. Morning now has morning has now had its time. Do not pay it a single dime. I merge from the darkness, a new day starts. Let light embrace the healing heart. There's there's healing that's going to need to be done. You don't leave friendships, relationships, partnerships without a little emotional baggage in tow, right? We I mean, try to work through it as you're doing it. Easier said than done. But you do need healing, that it's important, it needs to happen. And I liked here that it said, um, come out of the darkness, which could be the moon, right? The darkness of the night, you're coming out of the darkness into the light through the door. I love everything about this for you, Pile 2. I don't like, sorry, that this has to be an ending for you. But what I do like about it is that there is something positive on the other side and it's very difficult and all that God, source, universe wants for us, human beings here on earth, is to live our fulfilled life, the life that we deserved. If you believe the life that we planned before we come here, they want us to be able to find our way to our higher selves. But if you're dealing with a lot of drama and low vibrational energy, the chances of you this lifetime finding that for yourself pretty much nil, okay? That's why they want you to step out and get out of these types of situations and get yourself into a positive energy, higher vibrational space so that maybe you can find your way to your path, to your destiny. But when you're being held down, that tends to not happen. So that's what they want for you because they love you. what they want for everyone right that's why I think this Pluto going into Aquarius energy um, for groups of people is really going to change things for the better I hope 
okay? Well, I know it will. I'm not going to say I hope. I'm putting out there. I know it will. Okay, let's get an overall here for your reading pile too. Your words create worlds. I'm talking about the collective. I'm talking about, you know, you stepping up and stepping out, you know, that hopefully this Pluto into Aquarius is going to create a better world. But what I also want to say, we have throat chakra here. By you speaking your truth and moving from this, and, and there's truth that's going to need to be spoken, okay? I don't think you should just run away. <laughs> there's truth that needs to be spoken. Your words create worlds. Because not only are you making a change for yourself, you might possibly even make a change for the person that it is that you're, or group even, that you're walking away from. So pile two, Th this is, like I said, it, it's, uh, it's heavy in the sense that something here needs to change around relationships. And I know personally, that's never easy. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. You're going to be going from the dark into the light. And they're here to tell you again with the success, right? This is going to work out for you on the other side. So if you like that, uh, this message, please give me a thumbs up. Um, I want to appreciate it uh, just because it lets me know that you liked this, this reading. It also helps with the algorithm because I'm a small channel and I'm trying to grow. And if you're liking my videos and commenting on them even, it, it puts it into the algorithm and pushes my videos out to more people. Um, if you like energy readings, I do a ton of different ones with different theme decks, um, different topics. Um, I ask that you uh, subscribe to my channel if you like those types of readings. And if you know anyone that's going through this right now, please send them this video right? Please send it to them so that they can listen because there may be something in here that will be helpful to them too. So I ask that you help me spread the videos out as well. I really, really would appreciate it. And uh, I thank you very much for your time. Okay, see you next time, Pile 2. Hi to those of you who chose Pile 3 or this Tektite, okay, which is a piece of a meteor, I do believe. All right, so this is your uh, April energy reading, and I named it Holy Pluto because we have all that Pluto energy around us, surrounding us. Um, as it moves into Aquarius for a short stint in 2023, coming back for a number of years in 2024. But you can hear all of that. I did a short piece about that energy and what it means um, as a generational planet where it's affecting more of the collective than us as individuals, right? It will collect us as a whole, or sorry, we'll see the transformation and, and changes as a whole and feel it as a whole more than we will individually. But don't forget, we do have Pluto in our chart. In our natal chart, we have the eighth house, which is ruled by Pluto and Pluto rules Scorpio. So just knowing that, I think we can also pull on that Pluto energy because it's so strong right now as it changes signs to get an idea or feeling. And so I pulled cards to see how it may affect you personally, okay? We're gonna do live tarot at the end with an overall energy card and uh, another oracle card. But for now, we're gonna do overall energy and go through uh, the cards here. So how is Pluto possibly going to be transforming you, that energy, in what area? So we have Leo. Sun, fifth house. Okay, so here it says Leo energy is flamboyant, dramatic, proud, and passionate. It focuses on the importance of self-belief. Hmm, okay. And Earth. Okay, so right now, before we even get into the rest of the cards, what I want to say is the change that we're going to pull on that Pluto energy for is going to have something to do around. I'm going to say sometimes here with Pluto or sorry, with Leo energy, it can be a little egotistical at times as well. Okay, so um, 
it focuses on the importance of self-belief, but sometimes that self-belief can really, you know, transit form into a quite a huge ego. So, uh, or, you know, the flamboyance, the ego, <laughs> the, the drama, the passion of ego. Okay. So I feel like that's where we're going to be working, but let's see what the rest of the cards say. All right. Okay. We have tenderness. I like where that's going. Uh, Venus. Okay. Forgiveness. Independence. Dynamic. And empowerment. So. Pile three. I'm going to say the message that's coming in is the grounding down of this fiery, passionate Leo energy. Not take it away, not dim it or dull it by saying, you know, that it's bad, that's horrible, that's not it. Because what I feel with just here, we have dynamic, we have tenderness, we have forgiveness, is that maybe somewhere along the way or somewhere in your life right now, pile three, that energy may be overpowering your ability to show tenderness to others, to show love or caring to others, to be able to forgive others. It kind of ruins the dynamic that you have with others, okay? Or at least, you know, puts a wrench in it. So let's talk about this. There's nothing wrong with being flamboyant. There's nothing wrong with being dramatic or proud or passionate or to believe in yourself. We want everyone to have those attributes, okay? Absolutely. But if they're taken too far... It can affect your life and your relationships within your life. And just you personally. It might even be with people you don't have relationships with. It's just going to be how you're coming across to people, right? Which is going to maybe just put a sour taste in someone's mouth. Which means you're not going to get the service or whatever it is that you need. The same way someone who wasn't um, carrying those, those characteristics in that moment would get. So... We're talking about the energy of transformation, death and rebirth, what to let go of in order to bring something new in. And I think that it's not letting go of this energy completely, absolutely not. But what I want to say, if we imagine it as a fire, just kicking a little bit of dirt in the fire just to keep the fire under control and the flames down a little bit. We're not putting water on it to drown it out. We're just putting a little dirt on it <laughs> to just contain it okay I'm gonna say we're, we're, we're putting a little dirt around it in it on it to contain it the energy of tenderness activates our capacity to open our hearts and approach the world and each other with gentleness and care and that's exactly it showing people love and compassion and generosity and the beautiful side of yourself and the beautiful side of light treating them like the beautiful person, creature that they are, okay? And what I also want to say about this, we're talking about approaching the world. That Pluto energy going into Aquarius is all about the other. It's about the collective. It's about your social groups, your social circles. It's also about, you know, technology and being a, but it's about being a humanitarian, right? It's really caring about the other. And that's the Aquarius energy that I want to see transformed throughout the world, where people start once again to go back to caring and, and having compassion and concern for the other, tenderness even. This is kind of reminding me a little bit of pile one. I'll get into that in a minute. I asked when I was um, creating the piles and going through that I wanted this deck and this deck to be read together, right? This card, this card, this card, this card, and then an overall story message for you. It could be maybe for some of you in pile three that 
um, because of this, this ego, this proud, being too proud, you're unable to forgive others. You, what I like what it says here is that when you harbor, that you're harboring resentment and not forgiving another, it blocks the flow of love. So how can you open your heart and let that extend out when it's being blocked because you're too proud to forgive? The forgiveness is for yourself, not for the other person so that you can remove the block. It may even be that you're too independent. All right. Again, going into that, the, the sense of being too independent, right? Because there's Aquarius here, which we're talking about. But one of the things Aquarius also is, is, you know, being independent, marching to the beat of your own drum, not following others, um, you know, and while it has its uh, light, beautiful attribute side, it also has a shadow side. And maybe this is just the no, 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 I'm right. I'm right. I know I'm not listening or following you or your advice and therefore forgiveness can't be given. It'll be different for everyone. But what they want to show you here in this last pairing dynamic. I actually want to see what it says, but first I'm going to go with conjunction empowerment. Conjunction in a birth chart is when two planets are setting side by side, or as we want to call it on top of one another, right? They are um, exact degree or with just within a few degrees of one another, and they are working and acting together for energy. And this is what they want you to be like with other people, working and acting together, sharing that same tenderness, ability to forgive, ability to love and be loved or the beloved, right? The, the ability to want to march to the beat of your own drum, but alongside the person that also does and not find difference in it, but find commonality in it. And what this dynamic card, let's see here what's it saying. The frequency of dynamic supports our ability to harmonize, okay, between layers and aspects of different origin and frequency. Oh my God. It helps us to put together a reality that is made up of many different elements, both familiar and completely new with ease, grace, and great joy. That to me, okay, it's that dynamic of being able to march alongside of someone, for example. I mean, you may not have to literally march, but pretend you are. And you may have your own different unique ideas about what it is that you're marching for. But in the end, it's a common goal. There's that dynamic that's happening between the two of you, even as strangers. And where it ties into pile one is they want you to work on this going into this Pluto and Aquarius age where it hasn't happened for hundreds of years. One, number two, big changes happen collectively to groups of people. And it's really about bringing the collective more together. And that's my hope and prayer. And it's what I'm putting out there that this is going to have a positive impact. Not always easy while the change is happening or the transformation is happening, but the end result is beautiful. Okay. And they need you to work on this individually in yourself so that you're able to go out with an open heart into the world and have dynamic relationships and energy going back and forth between you and other people or being able to go out into the world, into the universe and um, showing tenderness and caring, again, love, forgiveness to other people. That's the only way this new Aquarius energy is going to work. We want the transformation to be beautiful in the end. Not to be all crazy and, you know, a group of individuals. We can have the individualistic attribute, right? Wanting to march to the beat of your own drum, believing in what it is that you believe in but them working as a collective and as a whole together. 
I want to say to see those changes made. Okay, so that's the main part of the message for you, Pile 3. I love it. I'm going to pull tarot now to see if there's any uh, clarification or confirmation of the cards on the table, but also to see if there's any additional advice, any additional guidance insight that they want to give to you that being god source universe okay but this is not oh oh hang on this is not drowning out that leo fiery leo energy that person that loves to stand in the sun it's just containing it so that this can happen within you and then around you we have Queen of Swords. Okay, I love that. I'm going to pull all three cards or hopefully it'll just flip out here. If not, we'll go in. And, oh, okay. A little too many. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to put these ones back in and give it another shuffle. That's the Three of Coins. Oh my God, you guys. Okay, this is perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay, and I feel like this one's sticking out and the Knight of Coins. Here we go. So, you are going to approach this, I'm saying here with this Queen of Swords energy, uh, with what is the Queen of Swords? She is focused. She is clever. I love the word clever when it comes to the swords <laughs> suit. Clever. She is honest. She is independent. Uh, what else? She's clear thinking. She's unbiased. She's balanced. Okay, that is the energy you want to take on. All right, that is how you want this earth moving um, to help contain the Leo energy and then moving out in the world to be. All of those things. Smart. The Three of Coins not necessarily depicted in this particular card, but in the regular tarot, in the Rider weight, we have people working together. It's, um, I think in the card, it's a man standing and possibly two women coming in. And it's like they're coming to him for advice. They're coming to him for help. They're coming to him maybe as a mentor or a guide to ask, how do I do this? How could we do this? Can we work together? Okay, we talked about working together with the dynamic. And then we have the Knight of Coins. And this is where I always say, when we're making changes for ourselves, it's not always easy, okay? It's gonna take time. This is what I wanna say, the Knight of Coins. Yes, this horse is rearing up, it's ready to go. However, the Knight of Coins or Knight of Pentacles is going to be steady He's going to have a plan. He's going to um, execute that plan methodically, okay? So a little slower than the other knights, say than like say a knight of wands or something. But what they wanna say with this Leo energy, we have the earth grounding. We have this for clarity, which is important, but then we have two earth cards here. And this is just saying slow and steady is going to win the race here not just for yourself and transformation, but also to bring it out into the world. So that is a beautiful message, Pile 3. I really, really like that. Let's get a tarot card here. Okay, did I say a tarot card? I meant, I don't know what I just said. Um, an Oracle card, Divine Doors. What did I just say about slow and steady? Patience. That is the card that came out. Everything soon will come to light and then you will see things will be all right. Okay? Okay? Patience. It's all going to happen in the time that it's meant to happen in. So just, you know, let's contain this energy a little bit. We want that fiery passion behind it. We want clear thought and thinking and a plan. And then we want a steady plan to execute it, to, to execute the change that needs to happen and then to carry it out into the world with others. Now, let's get the last overall energy oracle card here from Cosmic Journey, because this is a journey in your life. Whenever you're making changes, think of it as a journey. Sometimes it's long, sometimes it's 
short, you know, um, but just don't try to rush it, I think is the main message because they keep putting that into my head. Don't rush, don't rush. Eight of Pentacles, don't rush. <laughs> so let's get a card here for you, Pile 3. There are no wrong turns. I love that. I love that. And you know, the minute I read that, I was like, no wrong turns. Self-belief. That's part of this Leo energy here, okay? And that is believing as you're working on this, as you know, you're making those changes within yourself, there are no wrong turns. And I think I've said this in another reading recently. I don't know which one it was. It was about choosing the path and it was showing two doors, but neither, they were both good doors to go through. And I was like, if you're on the path to make changes in your life for the better, there is no wrong path. The universe is going to set that up. God, source is going to set that up for you so that if you're doing the work and willing to make the changes, you're not going to come to the fork in the road and have to choose between good and bad. You're going to have to come to a fork in the road and choose, choose between good and good or maybe good and better, but it doesn't matter because they're both good for you. And then you'll go down that path and you may split off again, right? And that's what this is saying. If you're willing to do this work in order in the end to help the collective, right? And I don't even know, yes, I did mention conjunction. Working together, there are no wrong turns in this for you. It's all positive in the end if you are willing to commit your time and energy to working on this for yourself. Okay, pile three, that is your message. I absolutely love it. I uh, am normally a pile three chooser. I'm going to say that. I'm going to admit it. I would have loved if I got this message, honestly, because it, it, it even reminds me of me a little bit, right? Um, except for here, I have Sagittarius energy, but it's, you know, it can be a little reckless at times itself. So I just, you know, turned that to me to, to the Sagittarius energy and thought, awesome message, Okay. So if you like this, I ask that you hit the, the like button. That one shows me that you like the message. Two, it helps with the algorithm. I'm a new channel trying to get my videos pushed out by YouTube, and that will certainly help. If you comment below, that helps. Uh, if you subscribe to my channel, that would just be wonderful. If you like energy readings, I do all different types of energy readings, different theme decks. Um, but in the end, it's all about the energy. So the messages come out, you know, similar to something like this. And if you know someone who may be caught a bit in this Leo energy and you know they have it in them to, to make the changes, this is the time, right? This is this is Pluto coming into Aquarius. So that energy is strong right now as it's changing signs. So um, please pass this message along to them, this video, and uh, hopefully they'll see something useful in it. But even if it's just the message that there are no wrong turns, if you're willing to do the work on yourself, you will be rewarded for that by having only good option A and good option B. Okay, pile three, thank you so much. I will see you next time.